Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're talking about monetary policy, in particular, the impact of changes in monetary policy on an economy. If we're talking about the impacts of changes in monetary policy, the key term we're thinking about is the, the transmission mechanism. So how changes in monetary policy affect the economy. If we look at how the RBA describes it, we can see it here. The transmission of monetary policy describes how changes made by the RBA to the cash rate, the instrument of monetary policy, flow through to economic activity and inflation. That was my RBA voice. Basically, this is what we're talking about. In terms of how the transmission mechanism works, the RBA has got a great diagram. There'll be a link to this in the show notes that talks about how changes in the cash rate then work all the way through the economy. So you can see, okay, they will affect deposit rates, savings investments, cash, asset prices, exchange rates, GDP, domestic prices, import prices, inflation expectations, inflation. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through some of these. But again, I'll put a link to this. Uh, it's a worksheet in the show notes. So you can then walk through how the change in the cash rate will then affect all these other elements in the economy. Pretty interesting stuff. Thanks, RBA. If we think about how the transmission mechanism works, there are four main channels of how the cash rate then affects the economy. But basically, this works through these four channels. And we're going to look at these in turn. Please note, I didn't come up with this stuff. Information in the next slides is adapted from uh, an RBA explainer sheet, which is really great called the transmission of monetary policy, uh, not being cynical, very, very useful. And I'll put a link to that also in the video description. The first channel we talk about is the saving and investment channel. Remember, these are the channels that help changes in the cash rate then affect the whole economy. First thing to think about is that if there's a lower cash rate, okay, that's going to be lower deposit rates. So that means that consumers, people will get, or businesses even, will get a lower return on their savings. So if there's a lower cash rate, lower deposit rates, people are more likely to, more likely to spend. Now remember, what we're going to do is, well don't remember because I didn't tell you yet, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a lower cash rate in this example. But for your notes, just flip the script. So you can say a higher cash rate, higher deposit rates, and that will reduce consumption. Again, lower cash rate, okay, that's lower lending rates. So that means that households will actually borrow more because it's cheaper. And this will increase their demand for housing assets and could increase economic growth. Also, that a lower cash rate, lower lending rates, that's gonna be good for businesses because it's cheaper. For them to borrow and they think that well if we borrowed by capital goods we're probably going to make more money from those capital goods than it costs to repay that debt so remember this is for a lower cash rate this is the savings and investment channel our first part of the transmission mechanism the second channel is the cash flow channel so the cash flow channel is slightly different think about it this way if there is a reduction in lending rates because this will lead to lower repayments on debt. Uh, lending rates will be cheaper, so less repayments. So household and businesses have more disposable income to spend. They have more cash to spend. The other thing is that if there is a reduction in interest rates from that lower cash rate, People get less income from deposits, from their savings, and this could slow consumption for some people. These two effects work in opposite directions. 
right? One is encouraging people to spend, the other stopping people from spending. But the RBA thinks that the first effect is more powerful than the second. So cheaper lending rates has more of an impact on the economy than less deposit return. The third channel is all about asset prices and wealth. And remember our example that we're looking at is, okay, what happens if we see a lower cash rate? So lower cash rate, lower interest rates means that more people can afford to buy assets, uh, houses, cars, they can take out loans for all sorts of things, responsible and irresponsible. And that will push up the prices of assets because more people want them. Higher asset prices also mean that individuals have more collateral or kind of uh, guaranteeing ability to guarantee loans so that they can increase the amount that they might be able to borrow. Overall, an increase in asset prices will increase people's wealth and this can lead to higher consumption and investment. And remember, this is from a lower cash rate. If we flip the script here, Because the reason I say potentially is that with a higher cash rate and higher interest rates, people might be able to get greater returns from certain types of assets. But just think about this essential thing, lower interest rates, higher demand for assets, higher interest rates, generally a lower demand for assets. And that will feed into this channel of asset prices and wealth. Okay, our final channel of the transmission mechanism is about exchange rates. So changes in the cash rate, yep, they will affect exchange rates. So for example, if Australia has lower interest rates, that will lead to lower returns for overseas investors. So if they get lower returns because of the lower interest rates, they're going to take their money elsewhere. And that will reduce demand for the Australian dollar and reduce the value of the Australian dollar. The other thing to think about is that if Australian interest rates are lower compared to the rest of the world, okay, that's going to reduce the value of the Australian dollar. And that if we have a lower Australian dollar, that's going to make imports more expensive and that's going to add to inflationary pressures. But also, a lower Australian dollar um, makes exports more internationally competitive and could boost aggregate demand. And remember, this is from a, if we look at the other situation, that will lead to an appreciation in the dollar and that these effects will in fact be opposite in that situation. There's one more thing before I go in this video, and that is that changes in the cash rate will have a big effect on inflationary expectations. So what people think will happen with inflation. So higher interest rates will reduce inflationary expectations because wage and price demands are going to be less because people don't think that um, prices are going to be going up and they're going to need higher wages because higher interest rates will slow everything down. Likewise, lower interest rates could actually get people thinking the economy is going to expand Prices are going to go up. I need some higher wages to cover those higher prices. So lower interest rates could fuel or accelerate inflationary expectations. Thanks for watching the video all about the transmission mechanism today. Subscribe so you can see some more. Also, go back and have a look at some of the previous videos all about monetary policy. Thanks for watching.